When I was a kid in the 80s Poland, apart from overwhelming fear of the governmental retribution against anyone who dared to speak against the communist government, the country constantly struggled with food supplies. After Poland introduced martial law in the 1981, the already restricted life got even more restricted and food became even more scarce. The government introduced rations that no child could possibly understand. I had tantrum every time my mom wasn't allowed to buy chocolates for me because the limit was one a month. My grandfather had to wake up at 3 a.m. every Friday to start queuing at the butchers across the street. Often, he wasn't even the first one in line. My grandparents' urban garden got us through many winters. Apart from picking fruits and veggies with my grandparents, their allotment was my safe space that protected me from the outside reality. I often sat at the granny's large kitchen table and watched her make all kinds of preserves which were only allowed to be open in the winter. That small, urban garden, the plot of land was our security blanket that got our family through the 80s. Hi, I'm Sarah and you're currently in East London, Leighton to be exact, and we are at the allotments, um, which is completely surrounded by buildings. Uh, we have houses, we've got new builds going up, we have the motorway and then Hackney Marshes as well so we're right in the heart of East London. I started coming over here when I was about two or three years of age. My mum had an allotment plot over here so we kind of started coming over because we lived in a tower block because there was five tower blocks here. first plant uh, which I bought from Sainsbury's, it was rosemary. Uh, since then I've learned that plants from supermarkets don't really last long. When I started this project my sole focus was to find a sweet spot that could allow people like myself, with busy lives and family commitments, to find a way to reduce food waste and single-use plastic consumption. However, the more I thought about food and feeding people, the more I thought about love. My granny never said that she loved any of us, but instead she cooked and baked, made preserves and was always concerned that we ate well enough to have some fat stored on our bodies just in case. My mom is not very different from my granny and her love comes through her cooking and making preserves. There's nothing better than getting your fingers dirty and actually getting on your hands and knees and digging holes and then planting food. It's it's great for the soul. If it wasn't for my mum, it would have taken me much longer to set up my garden than it did. She's an avid gardener. She guided me and explained that buying veggies or fruits that need bees while keeping those at home was stupid. Duh, of course I didn't know that. Not even a month into growing my garden, I started using the herbs I grew for tea and salads. I have to say those tasted beautifully and added an extra texture to my food. At first I kept most of my plants indoors, but once I set up the greenhouse on my balcony, I started slowly exposing the plants to the outside world. I don't quite understand why some seeds didn't blossom. From my rookie observation it looks like the seeds found the soil too dry and I couldn't keep it moist enough watering them every day. The onions, garlic, parsley and beetroot that my mom started growing in the water have all grown nicely and especially parsley and beetroot are plentiful and quickly renewable. Learning how to grow food is one of those basic skills that every one of us should have. You don't need to know everything from the start. The desire to learn how to grow your own garden is enough to get started and once you are hooked the process is like a snowball. benefits are amazing it's like 
you grow your produce and then you pick it, you just walk around the corner and then you cook it. It's great for your mental health. Um, growing flowers as well as fruit and vegetables is so much more better for your mind because you've got all the colours. It helps the bees and you can gain so much knowledge from people as well. Just like plants, we need to learn how to be resilient in the new world. If the worst case scenarios will materialize in the future, our small home gardens might be the main resource that helps to feed our families. Resilience is what helps in times of adversity and change, and we surely need a lot of that. Huge amounts um, of like things that we grow here, I'll pick and then take home, like spinach, rhubarb, um, onions, garlic, or like tomatoes when they start going, they keep going for months on the end and then you can preserve them at the end. Um, I still have to go and buy stuff from the shops, sadly, but I try to only buy things that are in season. It took me a long time to get my head around composting. Since my council doesn't provide organic waste bins, I decided to create my own compost. Despite my own space limitations, I set up the compost bin on my balcony. To help the food compost better, I blend all of the scraps and don't add any cooked foods. Since it's not as warm as I would like, my food scraps have not started composting yet, which means that most likely I would need to find an alternative to my balcony compost setup. You can grow food all through the winter as well. So I've had come over and picked Brussels sprouts for Christmas dinners and things grow at different times and you sow seeds at different times and then plant them out, which I neglect to do because I work full time. But you can get so much more if you succeed um, successfully seed over and over again. Um, and then you can keep growing for a much longer time and with the weather, We've got so much more sun and more heat now, so the growing season is much longer. But no, I'm, I'm over here in the winter, wrapped up warm, as well as over in the summer, I'm a, not a fair weather gardener. I didn't have a set up budget for my garden because I didn't know what to expect. Of course, I wanted to use as much reusable materials as possible. However, I didn't manage to totally avoid plastic. I try not to feel guilty about that, and I keep reminding myself that it wasn't a single-use plastic because I will reuse the pots in the future. I must admit that I was surprised by the price tag attached to plants, seeds, soil and gardening tools, which I didn't buy. The prices can price many people out of possibilities of growing their own food. Hence, this is where local councils should step in and offer space and advice from experienced gardeners how to build and run community gardens. When communities cook together or garden together, they create a strong bond filled with understanding, shared experience and love. I would recommend for anyone to try to grow their own food. You don't have to spend money on it. You can just, you know, you can use uh, onions, you can use parsley and you can just cut the ends and start growing your teeny tiny windowsill garden your perspective on growing food and gardening will change even if you have the small pot of onions or spring onions or a small pot of radishes or any kind of herb. Start small, use anything that you've got inside. If you have a balcony, buy some tubs and containers. You can grow carrots, potatoes, tomatoes, even squashes, cucumbers. As long as you've got a little frame, in there you can have things growing up them sweet peas peas anything um, if you want to go bigger like an allotment you need to contact your local council and then i'm sure there's going to be a waiting list but you can put your name down and they're also looking into community gardens as well because there's a lot of them popping up and just pressure your local council for more green growing space would i grow my own garden again 
Of course I would. I feel very connected to my plants and uh, I feel pretty sad when I go away for a few days and have to leave them behind. Um, I don't think that I'm doing, you know, I don't think that I want to grow my garden just for the, you know, just for the purpose of growing my own food and, you know, saving money or not buying any plastic packaging from the shops. But for my own benefits, for my own mental health, for my own happiness and uh, because I want my kids to know that actually fruits and veggies come from you know, plants and gardens, not from supermarkets. And uh, I think this is what gave me the most joy, knowing that my daughter actually likes the garden and enjoys pottering around in her, you know, in her own little way.